The last one, working with the framework. This is my last one. So if you're terribly bored by now, I promise not much more, just a little bit here. So I just want to talk a little bit. Part of this is just my thoughts um, and some suggestions for this. Uh, you know, the first thing is frameworks are tough. Uh, I've thought a lot about this since starting uh, KRAD, uh, you know, just in general about the use of a development framework. Uh, and they, they are very tough for a few reasons. Well, one, when you build a framework, you're looking at what developers are currently doing, their current process, right? And you look at that and say, we can optimize this. We can create something that you can do this in two steps or something like that. Well, you can already see the problem, right? So we look at that. By the time we go build that, get it back to them, the process has changed probably, okay? Uh, that's one of the biggest challenges, unless you can really iterate fast. Um, you know, things change so fast, and ways of doing things change so fast um, that it, it's hard uh, to build a framework that keeps up with that. Like I mentioned before, it adds to the developer learning curve, uh, unless that framework is very widespread. Um, so, you know, developers are, you know, at least have a handful of things they're familiar with and can be productive in right off the bat. And, and you have a framework that's going to add to that learning curve. It's really good when the functionality is a nice fit. But when it's not, it can kind of be a black box. You know, um, sometimes, they, you know, developers kind of look at that as an area that's just not touched. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't work right, nothing you can do about it. You have to make a request or you have to try to hack around or something. Yeah, let me give you a quick example of that. So when we were developing the, the DRMS, the, the, the KS Business Rules Management System, uh, we evaluated Drool, and we actually chose Drool because it had enough crossover with what we wanted to build out functionality-wise. But there was one little feature that it didn't have, and in order for us to work around that feature, we had to completely rip apart that framework and use it in a really non-standard way. So now we're 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 overriding the, the base like framework that, that we're using, and we decided this is silly. Like why would we why would we do this anymore? We shouldn't be doing this. And we looked at it and said, let's throw it out and just build our own. And 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 that really evolved into the KRMS and, and became a, a, a really nice product. Now. That being said, now we support this massive KRMS. So it's, do you want to, you know, do something in a non-standard way and then break yourself every time they upgrade their version, or do you want to be uh, in the business of maintaining your own system? And that's a really tough balance. Yep. Good point. Yeah. Uh, other observations. Uh, Dealing with enhancement requests, you know, there's other people responsible for that framework a lot of times, and upgrades can be rough. We know about that, right? And it's challenging for developers to agree on a foundation. And if anybody, if you haven't read this book here, I highly recommend you read this book. Uh, actually, you know what? In quality, we, things are really good. I mean, we... Our, our, our uh, KTI, TRC, we really don't have any problems. Uh, it's really amazing for an open source project how we've been able to agree on technology and so forth uh, because that is the number one killer of open source projects. Um, so, and things have been really, really good there for us. So that's a, that's a great thing. Um, but those are some of the challenges, uh, some really, you know, with, with the framework. Um, but uh, they can be very beneficial, I think, as well. Um, you know, if that functionality is a good fit, or after you get past that learning curve, you know, the hope is it would save developer time. Um, you know, I know those are two big ifs, but you know, uh, you know, obviously it's there to optimize something. Um, a lot of the application to evolve faster in those areas. I have an example of this. So the lookup framework was initially one of the one of the first pieces we built for the quality nervous system. There's in that architect team, uh, there was a senior developer architect 
um, who felt that every data object, business object or whatever, should have its own service and its own Dale doing the search. Okay, that was just best practice, service-oriented architecture, and, you know, each, every one of them should have that. Okay? Uh, so there's a little bit of debate about that because some people on the other side looked at the, K, the KFS and said, but, you know, 99% of the time, the searches are exactly the same, and we have an ORM tool that can do this for us generically. All right? Both had good points, but we ended up going with just the generic Dale and service for the search. Um, I don't know how many lookup screens are in quality now. I know the KFS has hundreds, um, so I'd say we're probably close to thousands. So, and over the years, how many enhancements we've done to the lookups? Like something simple as, you know, uh, changing, adding a wildcard. So if we would have done those searches for every single data object to add that little feature there, you have to go through every single one of them, modify its search routine for every single project instead of modify it once, right? So those are some examples where how the framework can allow you to evolve faster, uh, both functionality-wise and technically as well. Um, the OJB to JPA could be a lot worse, I think, if we didn't build off some of the tools that we have. All right, uh, I'm sure I'm not stating things that everybody here doesn't know. Uh, of course, you can implement standards with the uh, development frameworks, and you have a common development paradigm. So, uh, you know, developers should be able to move to any of our quality projects and, and know how to be productive. And then, of course, this is a big one now, right? Common look and feel, uh, portfolio. So, you know, I, I, I think um, a framework's not right for every project. You know, there's, there's no way you would use KRAT for a very small project, a few web pages. But I do really feel strongly um, that it's right for quality. Uh, I mean, maybe it's just quality, but I do think it's right for us and where we want to go. Um, so I think we're on the right path, and I know it's been a struggle, but I, I do think we're on the right path, uh, continuing to work where we're at. So some of the tips I think I would have is to continue the investing in developer learning. Um, I, I don't think that the framework should be a black box to developers. Uh, if they're able, if they understand that, and they know, for example, like how to create components, um, whatever our component is, right now it's a certain way, it might change, but that's important for them to understand that. Um, so if the framework doesn't do something, they know how to extend it out, all right? So um, I think there's things to do, you know, we're always willing to help on the right side to help with that. And continue your developer learning. Or get some senior developers to help the others understand the framework inner workings better. Oh, sorry. Closed already does a great job of this, but just a comma one, participating, KTI working groups. We're going to start having sprint reviews as well. Um, so if you want to join those every two weeks to keep up with the new stuff we're working on, you certainly be welcome. Contribute. Uh, and when Rice gets on GitHub, this will be very helpful. So I know that Quality Student uh, has resources of funding to get for the Rice team. But one of the reasons I think that um, some projects have been a little more successful with the framework, uh, in particular with, like, KFS. Now, granted, you know, the history of KFS, they considered that growth framework was really theirs, right? Um, but they had developers who just, could, you know, wrote code for the framework, right, and contributed it straight in. Um, I think we'd certainly be, uh, you know, I know, you know, it's open to contributions at any time. And I think if you can develop that, whether it's just a couple of resources on your team that do understand that and they don't have to wait for the Rice team to fix something or contribute something, they can go right in and do that. I think that can make a really, really big difference for a project and how fast you're able to move. Um, so, again, I think GitHub will help simplify that process a little bit for us, uh, especially for bigger things. But, uh, you know, if it's all possible as a project to get, you know, one or two resources that 
that can do that, that's really going to streamline things for you, I think. This is a bigger uh, thing, and that's work better to line. So remember the framework, it's great when it's a good fit, but when it's not, it's not so great. So if your if framework's building for something and what you need to build is drastically different, you're not going to get much use out of that. Um, so right now, there's a lot of history to this, and I certainly understand, but quality student has vastly different back end than Bryce and other quality projects. And um, what I'm seeing on the front end, too, is vastly different than what's being prototyped in the UXI project, which is mostly quality codes right now, what they're focused on. So how can we get those things to better align? I would say we want to move keep enriching the framework to meet better, you know, to be more flexible, in particular on the back end. But um, on the front end, and I really, you know, wish that the UXI had more resources to really get out and start making this, this happen more, but um, how can we make those look and feels come together? It's supposed to be a portfolio at the end of the day. Um, and that's going to make the job a developer's job much easier if they have a framework that's actually built for what they're trying to do, not for another project. Does that make sense? That's a tough challenge. I don't know how we get there, but as, as a community and the big picture, I think that's really important to getting the most value out of the framework. Hopefully that uh, UI working group will help a lot there. Uh, so for the designers on the quality student project, I really recommend, too, that try to stay as much involved with the stuff that's going on in the UXI project and get the stuff that you need in there as part of that. Or, you know, bring up issues about differences in the look and feel or something to try to bring them closer together. Sir, could you educate everybody in the room, all the meetings that you and the designers and UI devs spend every month? Yeah, so there, there's one meeting a month that any UX, UI dev across any quality project would basically at this point is UXI and KS because the other, the other projects just don't have those resources embedded in their teams. Hopefully that will change. Um, but anybody is welcome to attend that. Um, I know Heather sent out a note just within the last week and a half maybe, um, and is going to look at maybe rescheduling because there are some folks that just can't attend. But everybody is welcome. It's a place where you can bring up issues, you can show screens you're working on, um, you can see some of the things that the UXI is doing. It's basically an open forum. Anybody can put anything on the agenda to talk about anything UX related, <coughs> UI dev related. So. Um, you know, I'm encouraging all of, of our UX folks and UI devs within Kuali Student to do that. And as we add more people to our teams, we need to make sure that they get on that list. There's a, um, there's a list serve. I'm not sure if we have a Skype chat for that one in particular. <laughs> there's so many. But I don't think that we do. I think that one's just the mailing list. And I know one of the suggestions was Maybe we get a Skype chat for that one because that's just where more people are used to working. They don't always see the, the emails. Um, so please, if you're interested and you're not in there, send me your name. I'll make sure that, that you're added to that. And one other thing that I would like to say as far as better aligning the look and feel, Kind of like what Larry was talking about earlier, there's a balance that you have to strike with being consistent simply for consistency's sake, where it doesn't really make sense and it doesn't work. That's not good UX. It's not going to be good for our end users. So, you know, there are real differences between projects and what's going to work well for one may not work perfectly for the other. And, you know, one of the things that we've talked about in some of our smaller uh, UXI meetings is getting those basic things. You know, there are certain things that should be consistent across right. everything. Right. That doesn't mean that everything should be right. consistent. Yeah. Yeah. And so we need to strike that balance and understand where it makes sense to 
customize the screen right. based on the context, the users that are going to be using it, the data we're displaying, while still keeping the basic components similar so that you still get that portfolio -ness. Right, right. Um, because, you know, right. if you go out and look at the Adobe suite or the Microsoft Office suite or any other suite, you're going to be able to tell that, okay, this came from the same company. That doesn't mean that they're identical and you've got different tools available yep. and, you know, maybe a little bit of different placement here and there because it makes sense within the context of what you're working on. So okay. we need to understand that it's not consistency simply for consistency's sake. We, we want to design good software. So that's yeah. something else. Yeah, and I think that's, that's kind of, that's what I mean to absolutely right, because the things that are common are also the things that we should be developing on the framework. Exactly. Uh, and so, yeah, You're, thanks for clarifying that point. I just have a little bit more here. Um, so this is one that you might not have thought about before. Everybody might think it's an all or nothing thing. Well, I know you don't think that because you don't use the back end pieces of the back end. But even within KRAD, you know, uh, determine what pieces are a good fit for you. Um, so, for example, the theme builder. You didn't have to use the theme builder. <laughs> you know, that was just there. You could have packaged your resources however you want. Um, I consider some things, you know, important for us to be on the same things and others not. So it's something to look, to look at. But remember, what's bad today might be good tomorrow. <laughs> That's my other comment. Sometimes it's good to go through the pain uh, of something uh, if it's on the direction you think it should be. Because, we, you know, this is, if, you're, if we're working together on something, we're going to have a better chance of evolving something than you doing something on your own. Right? So... Um, but, you know, do that evaluation with the stuff that is provided with the framework and uh, see which pieces are a good fit for you or, or, or which pieces are not, and then you really need to go a different route with. <coughs> and we can have, the, you know, we can have that discussion back with the RICE, and that's what our KTI and stuff's for as well. Um, work out how you extend and customize the software. That's really important. Um, you know, every project should know how, how, what are the points to extend with the rice and, um, how you will pull in upgrades and, and so forth. Upgrade rice, excuse me. And the last one, uh, which you already do a great job of, um, helping us approve the framework. Like a couple of just additional things that we don't do as much right now. We get a lot of messages like, you know, when something's not working right or a question of how to do something. But I also hear that, you know, applications are having to do a lot of overrides and that there's a lot of design challenges. So when these things happen, if we can get that communication, that will give us data to make the framework better. So know how to design it so it can be extended. Or maybe something shouldn't be in there in the first place that you're having to override, and we can fix that. Uh, so uh, those are a couple of things in particular that I think would – would help us be able to improve the framework to make it work better. Yeah, right now, our, our communication for overrides tends to happen when we do an upgrade, and that upgrade breaks our overrides. And at that point, it's too late, and we're just trying to fix the problem and not really trying to address the issue. Um, so, yeah, if we can get ahead of those overrides ahead of time, uh, communicate back to the, the Terra developers and, and get some sort of feedback as far as what we should be doing versus what we have to do. Um, you know, the, the, that's getting ahead of that and not waiting until the, the, the upgrade is very great. It's a much better way to, to manage it. Yeah. Is there a way to or There's different ways to override. Oh, there's different ways to override. Yeah, I mean, there, there's cases where we're you know, whole hog copy and pasting an entire rice class and, and <coughs> modifying it to our needs. Yeah. Obviously, there's going to be some breakage when it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, or there won't be, even worse, there won't be breakage and some weird behavior will happen because of that change. Yeah. Another thing we're discussing, too, is, um, you know, again, you know, the foundation of rice was to share things that are in common and we've gotten into situations where we're building stuff that's very specific for an application and we've talked about that on the UXI project that we're possibly building 
too much in terms of these components that are too specific to another application, and then you have to override all this stuff to make it work for you. So, uh, you know, hearing about that can help us tweak that component or identify, you know, um, you know, make make it better uh, decisions in the future. Yeah, I think my plan did a really nice job of, of balancing that need to make some serious changes to the framework with, um, you know, sourcing it in their own their own work and then trying to contribute that back. And I think that's a much better way to do things than to just say, hey, KRAD, we need to uh, go develop this for six months and we'll tell you if it's right or not. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. That's all I had. Um, so hopefully this gives you a sense of kind of the big picture of, of you know, the challenges we have and some things we're hoping to do better and, and maybe, some, maybe some things that you guys can help help with as well, you know, to make this work better. Um, anybody have any uh, quest other questions or comments?